celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? This is Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and we will go until much later, like uh, midnight Eastern Daylight Time uh, with our little thing called The Ramble. We'll go to our citizens panel in just a little bit, but... uh, no, I mean uh, every now and then we gotta we gotta check in with some old friends. Okay, we do it once again. You know, we always this this particular person when we call them, uh, we uh, we 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 just ring the phone first because they always come up with something funny. Okay, let's see what happens here. We're ringing out there, and there we go. What does he have to say? Is he even there today? And here's my impression of Robert De Niro in the year 1846. I got one thing to say. Fuck Polk. Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Something for the history buffs. Fuck Fuck Polk. Polk. Yes. (sighs) Yeah. We believe in fuck poke too. Yay, we're actors in the 1800s. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're doing this show a little differently. I want to say I'm outdoors. This is going to be an outdoor podcast show. I'm in the uh, parking lot of the wonderful Sun Valley Mall in Concord, in front of the Macy's store. This is going to be like that old Dick Clark show where the action is from the 60s, oh, where all, right. all the bands would play outside and <laughs> lip sync on the beach and in parking lots and stuff. I remember that. Jeez, Almighty. And, and and they were always lip synced. <laughs> what always pissed me off is they always lip synced. You know, nobody course, ever think... nobody ever played live. Mm-hmm. And, well, on the American Bandstand, Jerry Lee Lewis insisted on performing live, and they, he almost didn't do the show. So, no, you have to lip sync the record. I'm not going to lip sync the record. I won't play live. He, he let they let him play live, and I think he's the only one that ever played live on American Bandstand. Well, you know why they lip synced. Because it would be too expensive to bring a band in and and get an audio guy, you know, who could uh, exactly. do All the, the audio. Exactly, the plugs and the wires yeah. and this and that. They could just play the record and lip sync and everybody's happy. Yeah. So, you know, what the hell? Jeez, almighty. Yeah, what the hell? I don't know. But here we are on a beautiful sunny day outside in Concord and it's just like where the action is. And here's every mother's son to sing, come on down to my boat, so, all your young kids out so there. So where are you exactly in the Concord Mall? I'm in between Sears and Macy's. It's really, it's quite exotic. Are you sitting? Are, are, just... are you sitting in the car? I'm sitting in the car. It's shady. Nobody's bothering me. I'm in a kind of semi-isolated part of part of the lot where we won't hear anybody, and it's just a very nice day. Oh, gee. Well, I just you know. I thought I, I thought we'd do it under the sun today. Yeah, yeah. So, what did you think about Robert De Niro the other night? I. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't know if that it, it solves anything to say that it was venting and all the all the liberal Hollywood actors. Hey, we agree, we agree. I don't know what that accomplishes. You know, he, he vented and he had the right to vent, but uh, you know, I I really don't have an opinion on it. He said what he said, and that's what it is. I still like his movies, and I have nothing against them. I would I would have said something different. I would have said good evening, good to be here at the Tonys, but that's me. Yeah, yeah. But if you were to say fuck you, Trump, would you have done it in a Stephen Pearl Manor. I probably would have made it a little funnier if I did. Yeah. But that... I have, you know, like a little bit, like uh, something like, uh, hello, uh, hello, President Trump. This is the president of Mexico. How are you, Pandejo? Oh, Pandejo, that must mean the great one. Yes, this is Pandejo. I just want to let you know we are not paying for the wall. You are paying for the wall. We are not paying for the wall. You are paying for the wall. We are paying for the wall. You are not paying for the wall. That's right. We are not paying for the wall. Ha <laughs> click. Oh, I'll get you. I'm Panday. Something like that. A little comedy sketch. A little comedy sketch of sorts, yeah. Some people felt that yeah, some... uh, that uh, uh, De Niro's statement alienated certain people. That would probably piss some... Uh, um, the more conservative people off. It was. It was. Uh, you know. It made news. No, that's well, for sure. It, that it. It. It kind of. There are arguments that by doing that, it brought the discourse down to a certain level, 
that some people, even liberals, don't feel comfortable with. Yeah, it, it was it was weird. I don't know what to say about it. I, I, if I was him, I would have handled it differently, but I'm not him, so there you go. Well, you were saying you would try and do it funnier, but you can't do it funnier than De Niro doing the De Niro voice <laughs> saying, <laughs> fuck I Trump. I want to tell you, I'm watching you, fuck Trump, fuck Trump. And then he, then he comes back and he goes, no, it's no longer uh, something about I don't like Trump, it's fuck Trump. I know, you know? it's just it's, it keeps getting... He keeps getting uh, more and more hateful towards the guy. Right. And I don't play him. I think they, I think Trump is a doofus. But uh, you know, are you, talk, you do? are you talking to Trump? Are you talking to Trump? You talking to you talking to me? You bloated orange fuck! You blow, yeah. talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. I'm Pendejo. Come on, come on, suck on this. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. He's, he obviously doesn't like the guy, and uh, you know, like I don't like Nixon. You know, if it was Nixon back in the day, he said fuck Nixon. I would have been cheering along with him. But, yeah. yeah, but I'm not a Trump fan at all. But. You know, I want him to succeed. You know, I think he's a horrible person, but I want him to succeed. Well, I mean, for all we, of us we, living in this country, we always want every president to succeed because yeah. then we succeed. But unfortunately, I don't think he's doing much to succeed. I think he's doing a lot oh. to make people believe he's succeeding. Yeah, but I don't see well, any evidence of it. You know. He's a snake oil salesman. He, he's a good at self-promotion. Everything's about him. So, you know, look what I did with Kim Jong-un. I did this. And what was really accomplished, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't even know why we meet with him because we have so much more military power than Korea. And I believe we have stuff that could shoot their stuff down if they pointed it towards us. So what are you even meeting with a guy? We could level the guy, I believe. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I think it was just a big press relations thing or something to make him look good. Well, no, Trump had a, um, um, uh, a press conference. Uh, afterwards, in which he talked mm -hmm. about what they talked about at the at the con meeting, uh, and yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> believed this is true. He said to, he said I told um, uh, Kim Jong Un that they've got all that beachfront property. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you, and that they should build condos there. Uh, that's a realtor's mind at work. <laughs> And there's nothing a fascist dictator likes better than providing affordable, good housing for his people. He said, because I've seen pictures of your shoreline there because our uh, planes go over it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Think of the golf courses, all the golf courses. He says, and you, oh, could, build, you could build condos there and you could build resorts there. <laughs> I love it. And who's the mediator? Dennis Rodman. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Well, you know what? You, 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 you got to give Rodman a some props here okay uh, uh he went over there played basketball came back here everybody hated him uh yeah. but he did open up relations with the united states it's true he, he did uh, just like the yeah kind of, and, <laughs> and, and then on top of it then they they assailed him for not attacking uh or or doing anything about uh, human rights in north korea so he wrote uh, Kim Jong Un and said, "You should release so and so," and so and so got released. Yeah, that freaking hell! But it was like, so, uh, what's her name? Kim Kardashian going to Trump at the yeah. White House saying, "You should free this lady." Some lady was put in jail for life for dealing drugs, and he freed her. So but, you know, you take the good wherever you can get it. Well, so yeah. You know. Well, this week when they were talking about, uh, you know, Kim did this and Kim did that, I thought they were talking about Kardashian when they were talking about <laughs> Jong Un. <laughs> You know. Yep. <laughs> Kim's doing really good. Yeah. God bless her. So, uh, what, well, how, uh, I always like to ask this of every comedian. How's the career going? What, what is this career you speak of, Earthling? Uh, well, actually, I did, I was actually in demand the other week. I emceed the wonderful Clark Morton Theater in Mill Valley, a nice show there, and I was at the punchline before that. And I think I get another gig in August. So, uh, yeah. You know, it's uh, I was I was I was in I was in show business. Now then I was in slow business. Now I'm in no business. Now do do do, do you uh, go out and and um, uh, look for work, or does it just kind of come to you now? It it, it came to me. <laughs> I don't hustle at all. It, it, I am not. I'm the anti hustler. <laughs> if, work, if somebody calls with a gig, I go, let me think about it. <laughs> so I want to leave the house that night, but. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I don't really hustle. Like occasionally, it comes finding me, and I'll take it. You, you got to hustle. You just got to hustle. I know. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not. A know, I, I always. Who aren't I, even funny who hustle their asses off at work I, all the time. So yeah. I always. I don't refer, have that hustle gene anymore. I always refer to Durst. who looks at his calendar in the morning. If there's a blank space on it, he's got to fill it. 
you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a major hustler. He's great, man. He's working yeah. all the time, and he deserves to. He's excellent. Well, he's excellent, and he he deserves to because he he works the room, as it were. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, he's a he's, you know to say is a, he's a pro is an understatement. Come on, he's, he's you know when I first saw him in '79 when I had five minutes of material, he was kicking ass for forty minutes. Just you know, whoa, and that was early dirt. So yeah, he was he was down at then. Now you're the go-to guy for music. Or, yeah, I'm here and there, sure. What do you yeah. want to know? What are you listening to these days? Uh, everything, everything. I like in the morning, I wake up, I do a bowl, I have a cup of coffee, and I play Frank Sinatra's The Coffee Song, the 1960 version, not the 1946 version. Oh, man, I'm back to a with a cup of coffee, like... And a bowl of weed, like you've never believed. I'm the Sinatra. And, uh, I'm, wait a minute, I'm the Sinatra expert, and I will disagree okay. with you. <laughs> I think the Billy May arranged coffee song, which I believe was on "Come Fly with Me," uh, uh, I think it is. Yes, yes, was the best version he ever did of that song. Oh, it was kick ass. The 1946 version. I'm not it's a little calypso, and I'm not crazy about, but the '60 version was kick ass. That I play that every morning without fail with my crappy cup of coffee I make myself and uh, then I'll play some Muddy Waters or some Sinatra or lots of Johnny and Edgar Winter of course that's part of the diet old timey blue whatever you know it depends what I want to hear sometimes I want to hear something really bad so I'll find some horrible song that's out of tune and, but uh, I, sometimes I like really bad music almost as much as I like really good music and if you want to hear one of the worst songs ever look up W.L. Horning singing Rocking and Rolling you will be hard pressed to find a worse song than that. What 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 but, is this? Uh, what what is this song again? It, it's some it's from the fifties. Some guy named W. L. Horning. Uh, is that is horny, horn, horny as in H O R N E Y? No, horny, horning like he's doing it. Okay. H O R N I N G. What, what's his first name? And it's it's initials W. L. W. Horny. I don't know who he was, what he did, what he lives on. <laughs> if he, I doubt he's alive anymore. This record is is the worst engineered, worst sounding, worst singing, worst edited. It's horrendous, and I love it. What, what, <laughs> I it? turn people on to it, and they go, "Why did you make me hear that? I can never hear it." Rocking and rolling. Yeah, uh -huh. check it out. It's on YouTube. You won't believe it. I have it here. <laughs> and there's little, yeah, I have it there's here. There's a little film I, of people dancing, and it's if, pretty bad. If I play it, it might not go out over Facebook. So you know. You may not want it to. It'll be, it'll be mass suicide if people hear this song. It's that bad. Really? Yeah, it's horrible. It's not even a song. I don't know what it is, but it is a song, but it's a horrible one. It's okay, so everybody, wonderful. right now, go to W.L. Horning and, and look at yeah. Rock and Rolling. It's like Rocking the and Rolling. It's the second thing there. It's the second thing there. The first one being Kiss Me Baby. Oh, he had another one? That must be the flip side. I haven't heard that one, but I, I assume it's not... It's not exactly now, Sergeant now why, Pepper. But, why do you, is that the worst song ever recorded? Just listen to it. Then if you don't agree with me, we'll have a little debate on it. Because I'll it's, tell you, uh, it's horrendous. I am the biggest, it's, I'm just this huge Sinatra fan. All I ever really yeah. listen to on my headset when I'm at the gym or when I'm walking or when I'm anywhere is Frank Sinatra. He was the best singer ever. I mean, you just... That's popular, you, 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 I mean, But there are some times I've got to, like, click and go go to the next track. Yeah, well, not all of them were winners. Like, even no, the Beatles he, did no, a couple of well, quarters. He did an album. He did one album. He did an album called Watertown. Watertown, 1970, his hippie album. That was written by Rod McEwen. <laughs> the worst poet of all time. And uh, oh it God. is just a horrible, horrible. <laughs> he made a mistake. He was, he was Frank smoked pot for the first time, so let's yeah. do this. It didn't work out. Then, if you listen to him <laughs> sing "Night and Day" in Milan and his Milan concert in Milan, if you can get a, a, uh -huh. a copy of that, which is you know it's it's uh -huh. underground and all that, he just opening up it does such a clam. 
that it it I I couldn't believe Sinatra was that bad, and the rest of the song is as terrible because he had. <laughs> it, 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 at that point in his life, this was about 1986, he had good days and he had bad days. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was starting to end then. So, and uh, this was a terrible day. Now, I have a copy of a concert in Milan the day afterwards, and he was terrific. You know? Yeah. I mean, he was never terrific at that point in his life. You know, he had lost his powers. Uh, yeah, sure. You know, after Old Blue Eyes came back, I think maybe there were one or two good albums, and then after that it was just, you know. And to hear him do Neil Diamond songs later on, just that, oh God, those, crack when Rosie, that broad's on fire, Jack, whoa, it's not working, Frank. But, right. but you go back to the Capitol days and the early um, uh, rep reprise days. Reprise? Reprise, was, uh, yeah, those days, the 50s to like the mid to late 60s were incredible. I mean, he, he, I couldn't be and his ba his Basie album was ter Basie albums were terrific, and his Ellington mm -hmm. album was terrific. But there's a truth about the Ellington album that most people don't realize. You know, it's uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, I can't remember the their real names. Francis K and so and so. And, oh, Francis uh, Francis as uh, yeah. Francis. Uh, and, and, what was his middle yeah. name? I don't have a Francis uh, Al Francis Albert and uh, Edward Ellington. Or yes, or something like that. Anyway. Edward Kennedy Ellington. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the truth about that album is, is that by that time, Ellington was so lazy that he just wanted to show up and go ding, ding on the piano. And that, <laughs> and that all the arrangements on that album were by Billy May emula uh, emulating the Ellington sound, where he, wow. was, he was always very good at imitating orchestras as well and styles. Yeah, um, uh, he did. Uh, for instance, years ago, he did all those Stan Freeberg records, where he, where he would do Lawrence Welk, and then he would do something else, and he had to recreate yeah. the sounds. And he managed to capture Ellington almost better than Ellington did. Yeah, I mean, he had a copy. He's a good copier. He's yeah, a forger. <laughs> but, but all those arrangements are Billy May. Uh, Damn, he was good though. But but he said, "I'm not going to be Billy May right now." And what I loved about yeah. Billy May's arrangements, see, I like Billy May's arrangements better than Nelson Riddle's arrangements when it came to Sinatra, uh -huh. mainly because Ellen, uh, uh, Riddle did nice arrangements, okay? He did beautiful arrangements. He was great at yeah. uh, concert songs, you know? But when it came to music where you wanted to have fun, Billy May was just full of humor in his music. You know, it was just, uh -huh. I mean, he was the one that did On the Road to Mandalay, that arrangement. Uh -huh. and, yeah. and just had so much fun with it. And and I just love Billy May. And the reason I love Billy May also is when I was a kid, I used to love those Capitol Kids records. Uh -huh. um, uh, and Billy May was, like Bozo the Clown records, Billy May was the orchestra. Oh, my God. He arranged those. Uh, hey, man, got to yeah. gotta pay the bills, he, right? No, he was, the like, he was like the house band at Capitol. He could do anything uh, for Capitol. So the, all those Capitol Kitty records, uh, Rusty and Orchestraville, things like that. You know, uh, it's always, uh, you know, uh, Billy May. So when it well, came to Sinatra, he took that same kind of sense of humor that he had with those things and applied it uh -huh. to, to the music Sinatra was doing. And I think did some of the best arrangements that ever were written for Sinatra. I mean, Come Fly With Me is just an absolute fucking classic. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Who did uh, the, 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 the Luck Be A Lady Tonight, the swinging version? They call you Lady Luck. I think, ah! I think that might have been Riddle, but I'm not sure. Oh, I like that. I Oh man, I listen to that one almost every morning too. There's a live version from '65 on YouTube, and he's just owning it, man. It's incredible. You know, but it, you don't mess with Frank. It could have been Billy May, but you, they did a concert in England a few years ago, where they did a tribute to Sinatra. One of the people singing, oddly enough, was Seth MacFarlane of uh, Family, uh -huh. Family Guy. And they had a bunch yeah. of British singers who I never heard of in my life, who who were all, and they went back and forth doing all these Sinatra songs. But what they did, and this is why, if you can lay your hands on that concert, uh, it was it was done at the uh, what is it the uh, the, the prom uh, they call it the proms, uh, and I'm the trying proms. to remember where they do it. Uh, Albert Hall, the, the proms at Albert Hall. The Royal Albert Hall. And they did an all night of Sinatra, 
And what they did is they went out and got the arrangements that he used. In other words, they didn't just write their own arrangements. They went and got the charts. They, they rented wow. the charts out, I guess, from the family or whatever. And so all the music wow. you're hearing are the original Nelson Riddle arrangements, the original Billy May Damn. arrangements, the original Johnny Mandel arrangements, and Don Costa arrangements. Mm -hmm. uh, just and it's it, it's it's wonderful. And I you, you know okay, Seth MacFarlane, eh, you're okay, you're mediocre. <laughs> he but, dialed it. I like him, but yeah. But I didn't. I just I, I just tuned him out and listened to the arrangements. Oh, there you go. <laughs> You know. Pretty good. It works. It works. I mean, so well, yeah, you want it to sound like the record anyway, except for the singer. But. Sinatra was blessed with some of the greatest ever uh, arrangers. You know, oh, best material, best arrangements, best uh, voice, of course. Oh my God, he, he had it. He had it all, baby. And all the broads you could shake a stick at. I mean, we go back to his Columbia days, and we think, eh, you know, I, 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 that's not a Sinatra. I, it's my go-to Sinatra, except like the last, I think the last Sinatra album out of, out of Columbia. Um, yeah. Because then he was being forced by Skitch Henderson to do all these stupid songs, like Mama Will Bark or whatever that song was with Dagmar. <laughs> You know, and, well, and he did. He didn't. Didn't that wasn't Mitch Miller or something? He, uh, he, uh, I think uh, Mitch Miller. Did I say Mitch Miller? Who, I know that. Wait, wait, Mitch Miller, absolutely. Wait, what did I say? I say Skitch Henderson. I meant Mitch. Yeah, Miller. yeah. You said. Uh, you said. Ah, I forgot who you said. No, but, uh, I, I, meant, was, I think you're thinking of Mitch Miller. Mitch who's like Miller. The dogs barking on records. Yeah, and Mi seals and horns and stuff. Mitch Miller believed in the in the novelty record. And yeah, so right, Sinatra was records. being forced by contract to do these novelty songs, and it was driving him nuts. You know, but he he had a arranger by the name of George Sharavo, who was really good towards the end that did his arrangements. And then he came over to Capitol, and a lot of the stuff you hear in the original uh, uh, Capitol records is George Sharavo ar ar arrangements uh. and influence. And um, wow, you know, uh, wow. I. I I believe, uh, I believe Mitch Miller also he might have uh, produced the Charlie Parker with strings record in the fifties because I, I bought it and there was pictures of Mitch Miller in the studio with him which is pretty interesting so he was apparently uh, you know capable of producing some good stuff. I, I'm trying to remember the song that he did that was his first record that he recorded at Capitol and it was a Nelson Riddle arrangement but he didn't know it was Nelson Riddle uh, and after he was finished recording and I'm trying to remember the song now I, I, I know it by by heart you know but I, right now my mind's a blur which is becoming these days but he after the um, after he did this the the you know the the session he 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 listened to the playback and he said I'm back ah. it was that <laughs> arrangement you know wow um wow and um uh, it, 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 and he was back, and he had, you know, then yeah. he, he, I think he just won the Oscar or whatever, and and so oh, yeah, all they, of that. For some reason his career had a lull before that. I don't know why, but uh, then he won the Oscar. He was back, baby. All that gave him for you to All the difference was between the old Sinatra and the newer Sinatra was confidence. And then he well, felt there was more of a swagger and a swinging. You know, the old records of the '40s and stuff were real ballads. Oh, and you and the later ones were just swinging balls out. You know, yeah. barn busters. The very yeah. last stuff he did at Columbia was was were literally a precursor to what happened at Capitol. But then I got to tell you this, and I know this because I'm you know as a broadcaster, I'm aware of this sort of thing. He went to Capitol that had all state of the art equipment so the quality of the sound was so much better uh -huh. and now they were recording these things on tape not on the acetate mm. so yeah, if you uh -huh. go back to the columbia last columbia album yeah you can hear the arrangements there but it doesn't have that quality that uh -huh. he got over at capital that really clear pristine quality and they were using yeah. telefunken well. microphones and they were doing it on tape and you know yep them all the modern equipment. Yeah, I mean, and these four-track recorders are ready to go. <laughs> you know, but I I got to tell you, it just uh, you know Sinatra to me was the uh, was the greatest thing. It, not since sliced bread, he was sliced bread. Oh, he um, was. You ever see him live? Uh, once, towards the end of his once, career, 
And he lit the stage. I never got to see him. And they put a cigarette out and lit the stage on fire. <laughs> Screw well, this. I'm burning it, the joint it, it to the was, ground, baby. It, it was at the Circle Star Theater, and the stage is a rug. And he put oh, it no. up. He put, you know, he was singing a ballad, and he threw the, threw the, you know, cigarette down, and he thought he put it oh. out, but he missed it by a mile because he was. <laughs> I'll tell you one last thing, and we got to go here. He, no. I'm, I'm, I'm watching him sing, and he's staring at me. I'm, ah, I'm like in the third, I'm like in the third row, right? Ah. And and he's staring at me, and he's staring at me, and he's staring at me, and I can't figure out why he's staring <laughs> at me. And then I look in front of me, and there's a teleprompter. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> he's reading all the songs off the teleprompter. There was one, this is a circular stage, and each quadrant of the stage. And I look over at another teleprompter, and he's singing. He goes, I get hungry for dinner. Oh, yeah. at eight. Wait a minute. <laughs> Forgetting the words. Wait a minute. Jack. And I look at the teleprompter, and it says Jack on it. It says Jack. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh my God! It says Ooby Doo right here. It, oh my God! Uh, it it, uh, it was painful uh, because that was oh, yeah. towards oh, the end. Yeah, it, 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 it was the night. It was the night Jilly died. I was supposed to meet him, and then oh. I, I couldn't because he didn't want to talk to anybody. But it was the night Jilly. Oh died. God, yeah. And my Jeez. father worked with him in at Calneva, and I saw him walking in the halls wow. and stuff, but I never saw him perform. Wow. Hey, listen, let's do this in a couple of weeks, okay? This is terrific. Anytime. I think we'll, we'll move it back to indoors, maybe, but you never know. We may be out in the park. Anything can happen. Ladies and gentlemen, the inimitable blah, 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 blah of uh, Stephen Pearl. Thank you, the outdoor nature-loving Stephen Pearl. Thank you so much. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap. The Great American Broadcast Network. Thank you very much, Stephen. Always love talking to the Pearl because we talk about music and things like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Let me uh, get rid of this, which is all the stuff that plays the audio. And let me bring up the uh, Skype panel here so that we can go to the Citizens panel. That's how people call us is uh, using uh, Skype. Uh, and if you don't know how to do that, uh, um, simply go over to our, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, our, uh, <laughs> go over to our, uh, webpage, gabnet.net, and therein lies every hint on the right-hand side of the page on how you can call us using Skype and where you can get Skype and all kinds of crap like that, okay? Well, the lines are open, and now I'm going to sit around waiting for people to call. The other night, Everybody called immediately because I didn't really start taking calls till about ten of of uh, of uh, of the hour, and uh, I guess everybody was waiting to see well, when, when do we go on when when do we have a chance and then they all just piled in there, and I think we had almost a full house within like uh, two minutes, which reminded me of the old days when this thing actually had a, a listenership. Well, let me fix my collar there. Anyway, so I'm sitting here waiting for people to call, and uh, uh, if you want to call using Skype, uh, as I said again, you go. It, the easiest way for me to tell you is to go over to GabNet and all the uh, .net, and all the information is there. Phone numbers that you can use if you don't want to use Skype. Uh, just uh, things you can click on to go to the Skype page and download the program and all of that. So give it a go. Uh, it's, uh, it, you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy yourself if you join the citizen panel. Okay. I, I'm just glad in a way that, that, that we don't have tons and tons of listeners, uh, because if we did, I would have trouble probably, um, uh, keeping people from ringing the show, uh, you know, but here we, for the most part, never get our, you know. Our full compliment. Hey, there! There's our first caller of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Phil. Hey, how you doing? Wait a minute, hold on a second. Let's add uh, Jeff to the group. Uh, yeah, yeah. There we go. There's his picture up there, and pretty soon we'll have yeah. him. Yeah, there we go. There's there's Jeff, and uh, of course we have uh, Phil. 
And uh, how, how's your heart doing? Have you seen? Had it got any more uh, word on that? Uh, June nineteenth. June nineteenth. Uh, June nineteenth. Yeah. What? Oh, then they'll uh, inject me with a radioactive isotope, uh, put me on a treadmill, try to make me have a heart attack, and then take a picture of uh, you having what's a heart left. You you collapsing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I went uh, six minutes uh, on the last one. Uh, uh, the whole time I was just having a nice conversation with the uh, gal who was uh, doing the EKG. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I said, how did I do? And she says, well, I'm, there's something. Uh, let me take it to the cardiologist. And uh, that's when they came back and said, uh, it's time for another. Yeah. Well, I, I, I had that happen to me once where they, well, it happens all the time. Whenever they try the EKG on me, it just doesn't work for some reason. And, uh -huh. and part of the reason is is that uh, uh, he, he then checked me over with his little sonogram deal and mm -hmm. found that I had a, I have a, 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 a arterial a stenosis. Yeah. I, you know, but it's mild. You know, well, and it's remained you know, mild over the years. Stenosis is a narrowing of the of something, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. The artery of the it's an aortic stenosis. That's what it is. All right. Yeah. But does that mean it's a narrowing? And uh, well, well that, is that, that, that my means, cholesterol is doing well. Uh, the, the word is mild. Okay. So yeah. and at my age, mild uh, aortic stenosis is pretty natural. Mm. Uh, but uh, every every couple of years he checks it just to make sure it hasn't gotten narrower and it hasn't, you know. So that's good. You know, I'm fine. And then uh, next week I go in for my yearly uh, uh, checkup with the doctor, who will then check my, I guess, send my my workout to be PSA'd, among other things. Oh wow, everybody's calling tonight. Here comes Brian. Except so far, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, eight. Yeah, we're, 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 uh, oh, he's, are you in a car, Brian? Yes, you are. Yeah, I am. I'm parked, though, so. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, no, so I have to go to the doctor next week for my yearly checkup. And, of course, I'm worried about my PSA test. But then I wonder why my PSA went up a whole point last year. And yeah. the difference between last year and the year before that is the diet. Hmm. And supposedly red meat can cause a higher PSA. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so I, the only thing that changed in that year was the fact that I went on that low-carbohydrate diet. Yes, Jeff? You've also been exercising a lot more. W well, that, that, that's, that's, good, that's good for my LDL cholesterol. Yeah. You know, so. but. Yeah. But I so I but I'm I'm so worried I'm worried about the prostate you know the PSA test going up because I went through the whole thing with you and I don't want to pee in my pants all the time. Nah, but at your age with your level of uh, prostate, uh, you know, why don't you just get a terp uh, so that it'll open up the. Uh, no, I'm, the not gonna, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to get anything I don't need. Okay. Uh, oh, so the drugs are doing it for you? Oh yeah, the drugs are fine. Oh, I don't yeah, have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. Yes, uh, yes, Brian. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I coming in clear? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I meant to say. I meant to. I thought about bringing this up uh, uh, last Friday, but I. Yeah. I, I'm glad I overslept, as I told you in the message. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's Tuesday, so it's the beginning of a new miserable week for a lot of people. So it's better to, to start with this uh, on the beginning of a new miserable week than to end it on a weekend. Yeah. That's. Uh, yeah. The. Uh, I'll just read the last paragraph word for word so people can draw their own conclusions as to who the asshole is versus who the bigger asshole is. And, Amy, if you're listening, this is about you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> many of us don't really care for the Beavis and Butthead South Park style humor and would rather that you don't put it on our pages, uh, namely my own page that I created as a tribute to your Gabnet. Oh, oh, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on. Let me back up a little bit, Brian, because we need a little history here. Yeah, you created a Gabnet page. I did a group page, Gabnet Live. Oh, uh, uh, Facebook. Yeah, but I, I did. we already have a Tim Facebook. Tim knows about it. 
Yeah, I did. I, it's it's a group it's it's a group page versus a regular Facebook page, which is what already exists. No, but I already I have figured. I already have a Gabnet Live group page. Oh, I I thought it was just uh, just one of those uh, fan like one of those. Uh, well, I I, th I think you that... can do a fan page. Uh, mine is it might mine is we have Gabnet Live. Uh, if you go to Gab. Uh, 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 well, that's it's unofficial, and I, I I I've stated as such over the course of the last. Yeah, but well, wait a minute, like wait a minute. Didn't didn't she start a page? Which I let her have it for doing that. Uh, not the, uh, not as far as I know. And if she has, I hadn't even so much as looked at it. Oh, so 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 that it. was your page, not hers. Then yes, it was. Oh, she that says she's correct. Started. If we're thinking about this, oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it gets worse. Then she's more, she's worse of a human being than I thought. Oh, wait a minute. Let, let, let's, let's let's go. Let's tread nicely here. Let's try and be nice. After all, she is one of the Gabnet family, if that's what you want to call it. Dysfunctional as it is. Hello, Rob. Boy, we're filled up almost. Look at it. It's wonderful. Anyway. So what is your what is your beef here, Brian? And and try and be tread lightly. Oh, since you told me that, yeah, I. Uh... <laughs> What's your beef with? You have a beef with Amy, right? Oh yeah, I do. Just uh, so as far as as far as I know, I don't know who many of us are. And when she says that, many of us don't care for your Beavis and Butter style humor. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, you don't seem to have a problem. I don't have it. a problem with it, no. And you own the whole. You own this whole enterprise. Well, I don't like to think I own it, you know. But well, you my but the people it, who do shows here are sharecroppers, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, I, Rob, I, I, you're sharecropper, yeah. right? On on Gabnet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh and rob 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 you even pointed this out of, of several months ago about how she started saying on uh on the intersection how uh you know i should watch what i say on account of uh how it could reflect on her candidacy well i recall. don't to begin with say anything you want on that show i don't give a shit about her fucking candidacy you know, I'm not uh, I, not be, not in lieu of this. Not in lieu of this. I don't. I did. I I held back. Then, I mean, how more out of respect it, for it, you, it, Alex and Jack, more out of the respect for you two. But uh, I'm not as inclined to hold well, back. Well, I mean, anymore. I don't like the fact that any consideration is being made because of her candidacy. You know, if she wants, if she wants that kind of. Um, uh, but I, I, I had a suspicion. I don't mean to interrupt, Alex. Part of the reason why I have to interrupt is because if yeah. I don't, I'm going to forget my, what okay. I'm Okay, well, finish what you're going to say today, because but... most of this doesn't mean anything to anybody, okay? Uh, Ex except I'm me a... and, you know, a few people who are involved listening to that show, okay? But, but to some who want to shut me up, as I suspect, some who want to shut me up, like Amy, and shame me into submission. It's not about her candidacy. It's about her not liking my personality overall and my disposition. Yeah. And she's using, using coded language to cover the fact, which pisses me the fuck off. Oh, boy. I, like I love it when you get mad. Shit like that pisses me off. I don't care. I don't care if um, if I don't give a shit if I'm not treading lightly, Alex. I'll slam dance on eggshells. I don't fucking care. You go behind my back and you do shit like that because I've had I've had people in the past do that do this to me too. Yeah. That's it. The gloves come off. I don't give a fuck. I'll set fire to the whole fucking place. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> shit like that. That's the shortest route to my fucking last nerve. Okay. At least. Someone like Phil, like I said, like I told you before in the in the instant message feed, Alex. No, uh, calm last down. Week, I know it's Phil who has a heart problem, but I don't want you to have one. You know, Phil, Phil and I may disagree politically on damn near everything, but I like to think that at the end of the day, after the lights come off, if we lived in closer proximity to each other, and Phil, I'm talking to you as well, uh, you know, we could go out and have a beer and bullshit. I mean, we may not agree on a whole hell of right. a lot, but oh. uh, you're not, we're not going to stab each other in the back like that. Phil doesn't take his politics that seriously that he determines who his friends are going to be, right, Phil? 
most of my friends are left wingers. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few right wingers myself, uh, yeah. Patrick notwithstanding, but also offline and in high school and all that. Yeah. I've got some. I've got. A, I know a friend of mine who I graduated high school with that would make both Patrick and Phil seem like. Uh, 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 Diane Feinstein the, or Hillary yeah. Clinton by comparison. Let me calm, Sanders, let me like, calm things no, down sir. for a quick second. Let me but calm things. Friends. Yeah, let me calm things down for a second, Brian. I notice you have an air freshener in your car. Yeah. Will you do me a favor and smell it and see if it's yeah. still fresh? Because people keep those things in their car for like twenty years, and of course they lost their freshness in the first ten minutes they were installed. Brian, Brian told us why he keeps the, He says that. There's many cars in the lot that look the same, but his has the air freshener, and that's how he finds I, it. Along Among other things, I keep on here just so I can tell the difference, because yeah. how many blue Honda Elantras are out, are out in the world? And oh, I, now this little, uh, this little uh, dust-up with Amy, uh, Scott does calls that show a lot. Do you know about this little dust-up between them? Or, I, or, I or Ray, Ray? That show, I, I think I fell asleep. No, I don't know about it. Oh, okay. How about you, Ray? You're raising your hand. Yeah, I've been I've been on there quite a bit lately. Brian, was this a recent thing? That well, that it's, it's culminated. Uh, it's common. It's it's been a culmination. And yeah. uh, Rob pointed it out once. Rob Alfano pointed it out a, a several months ago. Because she's she's done the same with me, and I just kind of kid around with. It. I mean, she did the same with Mike. Well, 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 same I don't Mike. I don't mind actually though. I mean, I I just kind of. I just kind of kid her back. I mean, yeah. she takes it, and so uh, she what takes it really seriously. And so, well, uh, Rob, I mean, Rob, gets, you know. what, what, what did you say to Brian? You know, I uh, don't remember. Yeah, I don't uh, remember you saying it. Huh? Yeah. I was making some kind was of. Was it on that show or on this show that I said it? Because I quite frankly, it was, on, it was on this show. You brought it to Alex's attention, and uh, I and and it was just like. Yeah. Uh, Late 2017, you you brought this to Alex's uh, attention. That's I haven't called. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I haven't called that show since probably late to 2017. Well, the thing I, is, well, I, the, starts, only, the only thing, the only thing that accepts it, 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 that bothers me on Amy's part is the fact that I expect that if people go out of their way to call the show, that we treat them with a certain amount of respect. You know, unless it's me. Unless it's you, <laughs> and in which case, I know what you. I know you can take a punch. Okay, yeah. you know, uh, but can we can we go to some yeah. other subjects now that you got that off your chest, oh, Brian? Fine. Oh yeah, well Jeff, Jeff. Yeah, I, I can pass on that, but I'll, all right, I'll just say I often listen to the sh to her show and Jack's show mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when I'm going to sleep, and <laughs> it's a, it's a very palatable place to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you didn't say that about my show, you know. No, 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 no. <laughs> At uh, midnight. In fact, well, I'm gonna, uh, Rob, work on a promo saying uh, the intersection, a good place to fall, a good show to fall asleep to. <laughs> Would you do that? I won't need Xanax. <laughs> hey, uh, I, got, I got a promo for you, Alex. Cool. Uh if you did like what she says at the end of every broadcast, if you don't have anything nice to say, come sit next to me yeah. with the following disclaimers. You can't use the word fuck. You can't uh, use the word uh, 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 people yeah. are cunts. You uh, can't use the word uh, go fuck yourself. You, you see, can't I use mean, the I'm, word I, shit. I, I don't encourage uh, there are disclaimers I, I, to the, I, what you can say and I don't not say encourage, to I don't encourage the use of, of uh, language on this show, but if people want to use it, uh, this is, you know, this fucking internet, you know, I can use it. I just did, you know, yes, minstrel. I, I honestly don't like the expletives, uh, on any of the shows. Uh, I just think there's a better way to express oh, yourself. Yeah. If you don't like it, Phil, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck me. Fuck you! <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> what kind of New Yorker? What kind of New Yorker is bothered by expletives? No, nobody. I just don't <laughs> think they have a place on on a radio show. That's this all. isn't it's, a radio show. This is I a fucking internet. School. And there's seven. You're, you're a radio guy. There to may me. be seven people listening to it. So while yeah, that's not even. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know. You, uh, hey, when when I was on the uh, 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 WRCC. Uh, there was 
seven people listening to me. <laughs> yeah, but but that was a over the air broadcast. But anyway, let's get on. There are a lot of things to talk about. Okay. Oh God, there are a lot of things to talk about. Trump with North Korea, of course. Well, Very yeah, proud well, of him. Well, well yeah, just, <laughs> just hold on, hold really? on, hold on. Me too. Me too. Huh? You too? Who? Yeah. Really? It, I mean, you're freezing He's the up. The best president there. we've ever had. This is this is the start of a brand new world, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a reality show. Nukes and reality nukes. shit show. Oh boy. Oh and boy. It's it's boy. Bizarre bizarre world. World. By bringing our troops home. Just think of the new resorts we're going to go to in North Carolina. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my favorite. That's my go-to destination place. North Korean beaches. Now, what do you what do you love about the whole thing, Phil? Let's let's get the the positive thing before we all lay into it. Okay. What what happened is is he turned upside down uh, the uh, the diplomatic uh, scenario. Uh-huh. So instead of having the underlings uh, uh, manage this from the bottom up, uh, he just uh, did what he does, mm-hmm. got together with the guy, uh, mm-hmm. started a conversation. Uh, and and, 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 and what, what did he get done? But the, he got it started. What, no, what did he get done? Well, he, uh, he started a, a, a road for peace in the Korean uh, Peninsula. Uh, really? Uh, uh, yes, Jeff. Uh, it's called the Professional Trump Syncophant Ass Kisser Strategy which means nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Now, uh, Phil, we'll see. Phil, Phil, uh, okay, they signed uh, an agreement, didn't they? A memo. They? Huh? A memo. Ended a 70-year war. Uh-huh. Oh, I see. It did? Yeah. It uh, did. Uh, do you, okay. So well, would you tell us what was, was would you tell us what was in it? Because I have it right in front of me. And I'm well, they're returning the bodies. No, of, that's not uh, part uh, of the deal. That's not that well, was they are. The, he brought that up to him. And Kim Jong Un said, sure. Why do why should we have some rotting bodies in our midst? OK, <laughs> but that that wasn't one of the things that was signed. Not good enough, huh? It's not in writing. It's not in writing. Can what I, did what did oh, they okay. put in writing? Remember, they sat there, both of them signing an agreement. Yeah, uh, that they uh, as far as I know, uh, I I didn't read the agreement, but I know that. Oh, what they, you didn't read the agreement, you know? Probably, no, ne- and, well, you see, and, and probably is, neither did Donald Trump, because when they asked him what was in it, he had to try and find the place in it that he wanted to find out the answer to the question the person was asking. Can I show you people out there, and also you, Phil, and how big that agreement is? Can you see One it? page memo. That's, that's pretty that's nice. A page. Huh? It's, a, it's a third of a page. Yeah, it's a, it's well, a you read, no, read, uh, actually, a typewritten page is about a fifth of the page. This oh, is what the... Do you know what's in this agreement, Phil? His signature, it's kind of... No, 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 no. What, 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 what's, what's in this agreement? Uh, why don't you read it since it's no, only no, a fifth no. of a page? No, no, no. You're the guy who loves what Trump did. Well, as far as I'm concerned, just the fact that he met with the guy, he brought him out of his country. Uh, they oh, they uh, met, they talked. Wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. They, minute. Well, you could say he brought him out of his country. He left his country and went to Singapore. Which is uh, one of the few. Yeah. Th- the and was there actually two days earlier than Trump. So he could the do a little sightseeing. Well, that's because they have a Disney thing there. But, you know, uh, or Universal. But the, the thing is, uh, he hasn't traveled out of his country since 2011. Uh, and uh, he's, uh, you know, of course, he's afraid of a, a number of things, even though he went to school in Switzerland. Uh, since he's become... I'm still <laughs> asking you, what's in the fucking agreement? No, fucking read it, you lazy. Come on, read it. No, no, because I want to find out. Because before you can say how I wonderful he is... Sign. An agreement. No, before Which, as you... As far as I'm concerned, was the start of something good. Oh, I see the start of something good. Isn't right. that a that's, song? That, that, yes. That's <laughs> like somebody who tickles the end of your penis and says there's more to come. Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> not on their end, there isn't. On your end, maybe, but not on their end. Yeah. Uh, uh, the start of a new reality. Okay, but let's, let's look at the... Oh, yes, Patrick. Number one. 
one, they did have it in that agreement, the recovery of the... Uh, no, no, they don't. Oh, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. You're correct. That's in here. Yeah, I have it. Yeah. It's number four. So that's one thing that he accomplished. The other thing, and I will back Philip on this because this has been said from the outset. He didn't go in there with the expectation of ending anything, but rather beginning the talk of denuclearization. And that's what happened. Because I've got the four things right in front of me, too. And I'll tell you what, um, if anything comes out of this immediately, just the recovery of the body is a good start. Because the families have been waiting for 70 years for these bodies. And I had a thread on my Facebook page that got pretty fucking uh, shitty by some people saying, well, who gives a shit about bones? Well, you know what? If you've ever lost somebody... No, I, look, look, I under I understand that, but I, I don't think, I think this was a concession that was asked for, and Kim Jong-un had no uh, argument against it since, uh, what the hell, if this is what it's going to take to show good faith, you do it. It's not a major thing that got accomplished. We have not found peace in our time because we're getting bodies back in, in you know, uh, uh, so your bones back. You, as far as you're concerned, if it didn't, if it didn't lead to automatic, a final well, let's agreement. Go, let's go through this agreement. Yeah, I'm seeing it right here. I don't oh. see anything wrong with it. <laughs> well, to begin with, it I says nothing. Can... It says nothing. It says that they're going to uh, commit to establish uh, relations in accordance with the desire of the people of the two countries mm -hmm. for peace and prosperity. I mean, you, if you don't set a goal, you'll never accomplish it. It's a written goal. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It's the United States well, is joining the efforts to build a lasting and stable peace regime on the Korean Peninsula. Is that so bad? Oh, gee, uh, you're, now you're reading it because you didn't read it earlier today. I didn't even know it was out. And Trump earlier. never. They, they, Trump they also Trump, said that they were going to stop the war games, and they didn't tell nobody. Yeah, they so, didn't tell South Korea that. Well, he, they found out. At least it wasn't on oh. Twitter. Mm. They're temporarily halting. Yeah. They're not ending up. They're halting them. They're halting them. Right. And if and if and if, uh, and if North Korea doesn't uh, conform and start to denuclearize as they promised, then uh, the war games can well. Uh, it, can it, start it, again. It, wait a minute. Number three says. Re well, first of all, first of all, number one. In case people are listening, want to know what it is the United States and the DPRK. Commit to establish a new U.S. DPRK relations in accordance with the desire of the peoples of the two countries for peace and prosperity. Okay? That means, uh, hey, uh, we promise to talk to each other. All right. That, you, that was obvious when you were having discussions. Okay? It, it didn't take much to get that. It didn't take much to get this one either. The United States and the DPRK will join their efforts to build lasting and stable peace regime on the Korean Peninsula. All right. Uh, and number three, reaffirming the April 27, 2018 Panmunjom Declaration, the DPRK commits to work towards complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Now that, when they say that, that includes South Korea. You realize that, don't you? Well, it's not may not be fine with South Korea. Say that again, please. What? Reaffir reaffirming they're living the, in peace. They don't uh, need uh, them. Uh, wait a minute. You are, you are living in a dream world, Phil. Reaffirming the April 27, 2018 Panmunjom Declaration, the DPRK commits to work towards a complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Now, yes. No Jim. nukes. Huh? No nukes. No nukes. No nukes. It's okay with me. Yeah, I know that's okay with you, but that okay wasn't that was, wait a minute. That wasn't Trump's idea. That was Kim Jong un's idea. Well, no, no, no. Trump wants complete denuclearization. Well, I don't think he's going to get it. Okay. Well, I think you didn't think he, there was going to be a meeting today either. The United States and the DPRK commit to recovering POW and MIA remains, including the immediate uh, repatriation of those already identified. 
uh, which, you know, uh, 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 that's about the only thing that has any real substance in there, but it has nothing to do with peace. It has to do with shaking hands and saying, okay, I'm going to do something nice for you. Yes, Jeff. Started Jeff, with the Vietnam. Jeff, Jeff has his hand up. people are there in North Vietnam that were originally somehow connected with what? the United States? What did you say? How many people were there that are uh, dead and their body is in North Korea. One oh, people, soldiers. two people, seven. Uh, well, I don't I, know. I, I, after I, after this many years, I don't know how many bodies there would be. You know, after, I can't believe Vietnam, that they saved them and said someday we may have to give them back. After Vietnam, uh, once uh, we came to a peace agreement with the Vietnamese, North Vietnamese, they returned our uh, war dead. Uh, that, uh, but that was slightly more possible than 70 years later. Well, it, it is what it is. I mean, uh, it, it wasn't possible to have this until Trump started negotiations and started an open dialogue with the North Koreans. This has been a failed uh, uh, legacy for, uh, for 70 years. And uh, several presidents have tried to have no, negotiations. No, it, it, they have had negotiations, oh, and they that's... have signed agreements, Phil. With other with other leaders, it but, wasn't no. with Kim Jong Un. Well, Kim Jong Un's only been the leader of that country for what about eight years, something like that. Since I, 2011. Six, but, uh, yeah. Do we trust that it, son of a bitch? Well, wait a minute. I let me don't. finish. Let me finish. We have had negotiations with North Korea. They have signed uh, non-proliferation agreements, and uh, the previous uh, uh, North Korean leaders. Have have uh, well, there's only really been two. Uh, have 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 uh, reneged on it. Uh, so what makes you think that uh, the same thing isn't going to happen here? It's amazing how I'll tell you something right now. We have a a better deal going with Iran than we do with North Korea, and probably we will settle for less than what Iran did. When well, we do it with North Korea, your, your your statement has no basis in fact. It, well, I'm basing it in fact because according to every person who's been armed with the duty of checking the nuclear capabilities of Iran, the nuclear inspectors have said they have been living by their word, and that is an international body. But by the well, way, Trump we don't like in the international body because we hate all the other countries, and yet you go to fucking uh, Singapore and you kiss the ass of a guy who's killed people, who has caused endless grief, and call him talented. We Jesus were this fucking Christ, where, in what world ago. is that motherfucker living? We were this close to nuclear war six months ago. No, now we we're weren't. That we weren't this close to nuclear war because it's the guy so didn't. No, the guy didn't have the missile capability of delivering it. But it delivered it to, to no. To it Trump on. made you feel like you were on the so, edge of, of 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 the abyss, but you weren't it, yet. And and you don't think he could have delivered it to Incheon, Seoul, Japan. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, no, the he South didn't Coast. have the no. He didn't have the nuclear capability because you've got to be able to have the rocket go up, have enough uh, protection for the bomb so it doesn't blow up in midair from all the friction. But you don't know about this kind of thing because you're like Trump. He doesn't even have a science fucking director in his administration. Yeah, yeah he doesn't need one. All he needs to do is yeah. All he needs is what he learned in biology. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Ray. Well, here's what I think. Trump wants the Nobel Prize. So he had this meeting with the G7, and he fucked them over. And just because Canada said we don't like to be pushed around, Trump loved that, because then he had to be an, a bigger excuse to fuck them over and look like a big man in front of Kim Jong-un, which he needed to do. And he screwed over our allies so that he could go over there and have this bullshit meeting with this guy who had his brother-in-law chopped up into pieces and fed to dogs. And uh, nothing actually happened from this meeting. It will come to nothing. And all Trump gives a shit about is winning the Nobel Prize. And That's he right. screwed over our allies in order to get the Nobel Prize for himself. And that's what I think. And he probably will get it. And then he'll flex his muscles and all of his supporters will you, go. You know who's nodding his head? Phil and all the who's other Who's nodding idiots. his head yes is Rob. Rob? Yes, all for show. On both sides. On both sides. Because 
both sides of what? Maybe Trump is like a little bit better than Kim Jong Un. That's the kind of guy he is. He could give a shit. Why? Why isn't he bringing up all of the uh, atrocities, all of the stuff? Because he, he doesn't give a shit. He cares about himself and nothing else. How can he meet with that guy? That guy is a pig. <laughs> Right. That, guy, that guy has people murdered in he's his government him if they go against him. He's giving him all kinds of accolades. And by the what? way, by the way, he did he he did not bring up the violations of human rights. And he said he wouldn't. Right. Exactly. Uh, uh, yes. And 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 the fact of the matter was, and then he gets out in public, and rather than saying we had a nice discussion, very nice to meet him. Blah, 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 blah. No, he's a very talented guy. Oh, he's wonderful. His people love him. He said his people love him. <laughs> you know, I mean, there, there was so much dick sucking going on on the part of Donald Trump. I couldn't believe it. It's sad. The Nobel Peace Prize. He and wants it. The state of this world. I say the only guy who should get the Nobel Peace Prize for this, this is, is Dennis Rodman. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the Did you see the interview? I saw a little, yeah, I saw what I could Gosh. of it because yeah, it was in it, bits and pieces. He was, was wearing uh, no, the Magna I, hat. No, everybody was calling him crazy and nuts and all of that, and yet, hey, look at where we are now. But yeah, you know, well, uh, he the was thing the that got me that if you looked at that whole thing and sat back and looked at it, he went over there and treated Kim Jong Un like he was a little kid, and which he is, and. And Rodman went over there and treated him like a little kid and played with him and, and went over there and smoked cigars and, and, you know, bought him candy and played basketball with him. And, and, and that's kind of like what I feel like what Trump went over there did. And, and they were both a couple of little kids and went over there and they played their little games and said, oh, look what we got. And, you know, we got this, this little thing and we're going to play our little games and we're going to stand in front of the cameras and, and, you know, have our little fun and then we're going to go mm -hmm. home. With this little piece of paper, and we're going to leave that behind and, and see what happens. But the question That's is, it. who's the big winner here? Nobody. I think, no, I Correct. think Kim Jong-un is the winner. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah that's, that's true. Because be they're going to go back and they're going to cut this whole thing up. And they're going to make it look good for them. Mm -hmm. And their, their propaganda, when they go back, and they're going to pl plaster it all over, all over their country. In well, but more than that, more than that, and then I then I, I noticed that Patrick has his hand up. Uh, the reason I say Kim Jong Un is the winner in all of this is he's a little tin horn dictator, and here is the biggest nation in the world, the leader of the biggest nation in the world, flying to meet him in Singapore and have a meeting. All of a sudden, Kim Jong Un is is being recognized, and you know something? That's what those nukes got him was recognition. And that's what it takes in this world to get recognition and to have people listen to you is build some nukes. Think of the f f listenership I would have if I owned nukes. Yeah, uh, a couple yeah. days before, they took them over to the casinos and said, look at this and look at that. And, of course, Trump said, look at the beaches you got. You could have a casino on your beach and the whole shit. Do you know that in the White House they were talking uh, with, the, with the, the guy from North Korea? He brought up the building of a casino in yeah. North Korea. Yeah. So that's what Trump is setting up for. Oh, yes, uh, yes Patrick. We have a mobster president. Pa Patrick. Oh, yeah, we do have that. Patrick had his hand up and then they were and talking then even uh, like Bill a... Bill pointed that out. Hannity tonight, are you going to come down to Mar-a-Lago? Yeah. Okay, Patrick <laughs> and then uh, Jeff. I've been trying to get in for longer than I have. Who? Yeah. Jeff? Okay, Jeff first then. Okay. You're thank such you. a gentleman, Patrick. Oh, <laughs> I, thank you very much. <laughs> I, I want to say one thing. Of everybody here who's, on, on, who's here today making uh, discussions, Alex is the only guy who knows anything about the Korean War because our, our, of age. And my age is about the same as Trump's. And you know what? I know shit about Korea other than working on Match. What was the TV show? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. My father was over there. I, I studied well, the yeah, Korean War in school. But I don't know much about that it. That was like my major. Oh, it is a war none of us know about. I mean, a <laughs> lot of, even, no, I, even I, is, I was, how old was I? I was in, I was in high school, I think, when it was, going, there you go. when it was coming to an end. 
you know, and uh, 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 you know, the problem with Korea was we came out of World War II and we really were heroes. I mean, we went off to war to fight a war to really benefit other people rather than ourselves. This war was not on our own soil. And, and we came back feeling pretty good about ourselves. We had given our blood and our treasure and uh, whatever uh, for a world that was safe from tyranny. All right? All of a sudden, we're looking for another war. Yeah. And that was the first war we had that probably we shouldn't have <laughs> been a part of. Well, okay. China was trying through proxy uh, through, the, through the North Koreans mm -hmm. to take over the entire peninsula. Mm -hmm. Uh, and turn it into a communist? No. Yeah. And uh, then what yeah. we did is, yeah. is we made we 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 created the de the, the demilitarized zone right away, and then we just held our ground, and that's all that really happened. Yeah, What's but that? we went and we stopped somebody from trying to do something, but yeah. it was something that was probably should have been fought out in that area. Yeah, right? and it would and China and by the China way, by, through by, the North Koreans would have just ended up taking. By the way, the whole if, place. if North Korea were part of China today, those people were having would be having a good dinner tonight, you know. No, yeah. no. What I'm saying is they were backed by China, and they would yeah. and 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 they would have just run over the southern part of Korea, and then it would have all just been Korea and yeah. a, a, a communist dictatorship. But then we th th then we after that we went to Vietnam, and that was a total mistake. Yeah. I Total mean, mistake. we did hold we did hold Korea, but in Vietnam yeah. we did not. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, uh, the the only thing that that did bother me about the entire thing was the lack of bringing up uh, human rights violations. I mean, I I think that should have been part of the meeting, if not part of the agreement that was signed, uh, at least brought up in the meeting, even if it was brought up only in the private meeting and not the working lunch, but it should have been brought up because it, to me, yeah. um, a lasting peace on that peninsula is going to require not only denuclearization, but uh, human rights. And I don't know to what extent we can expect uh, a country like North Korea, even if they uh, come around somewhat to a Western mm -hmm. way, I mean, you know, you look at some of the countries in the Middle East that still have uh, brutal execution styles, but yet, you know, they're somewhat Westernized. I think that's about the best we can hope for. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Have been brought up. Rob has his hand up. Rob? Am I the only one who looks at this and says that this guy has got such a, a pile of shit that's about to come down on him with this Mueller investigation and everything that's going on, and he needs this. And he'll yeah. do anything for this much. That's why he got that's, that fifth of a page. It's he needs this. Because yes, otherwise, Rob, and you're not the only one. Rob, that's exactly what I was trying you're to say. The only when one. I said about the Nobel Prize, he just needs to collect as many alkaloids as he can because he knows he's got the shit okay. coming down on him soon. And so he needs to build up some credibility. And when you say westernize, what are we becoming? His two best friends are Kim Jong un and Putin. <laughs> All he was trying to do was stop the nuclear threat in the Korean Peninsula and a threat against the United States. Please, please right ease up on I just that. I not give a shit about uh, North Korea and their other problems. You, do you know? Do you know? Do you, do you know what? America you know why? The, you know why there never was any any Phil right Phil. You want to know why there was never any nuclear threat? Because Kim Jong Un, who is not stupid, he's played this. He's played this so-called businessman like a fiddle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the one thing that Trump got right is that he's a smart man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one thing about this is, is uh, now what was the point I was going to make? I forgot what the point was I was going to make. Uh, <laughs> but it, 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 you know, I mean, it, it's quite a, you know, uh, I, I can't remember what it was. I had a point and I got so Sorry, verbose Alex. in my, uh, yeah. Um, where was I going? What did I say before that? Do you remember, Kevin? Oh, let's go to Phil. Huh? <laughs> go to Phil if you can. Go to Phil. Yeah, right. Uh, no, but I mean, I'm saying that Kim Jong Un uh, was it was playing him like a fiddle. 
you know. And uh, and uh, uh, the thing that I didn't get is why did he act the way he did towards the G7 when he was going to make a deal with somebody else a few days later and he had to go there with them knowing full well that Donald Trump doesn't live up to his word? It's very simple. You know what the tariff is on milk? No, forget about the fucking tariff. He said, I'll sign it. I agree with it. And then he left and didn't sign it. Right. Because, okay, so uh, he's a uh, fucking liar. You can't do business with the man. Yeah, he stabbed maybe, him in the back. Maybe that's the way. He, that, maybe that's the way. Oh, he stabbed him in the back. Come on. That, <laughs> that fucking Trudeau, that's Canada. They're so fucking polite, they wouldn't be able to find your back. Yeah, well, I guess uh, his, his eyebrow got in the way. What eyebrow? Uh, uh, Trudeau has paste on eyebrows, and one of them fell, and they got a picture of it. It tapped down his face. <laughs> you know, what? during a uh, during some press conference. Yeah. Why? 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 Why would he wear false uh, eyebrows? Hey, it, could it, it, no, it no, it could, no, it could be uh, some kind of hair problem and growing eyebrows, and doesn't have them. Could be. Uh, there was there I was a very that, light yeah. color eyebrow underneath it where it's supposed to be, yeah. and that might have been drawn in. And then he had the eyebrows on top, and one of them fell down. Yeah. Well, so you're making fun of a man's problem. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, that because that's exactly what Trump would do, and he's your hero. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny that Diane Feinstein, uh, who I don't like for other reasons. Uh, Neither do I. Said today, today that Trump is doing the right thing by opening up uh, a dialogue with Kim Jong Un, and but Schumer makes the same bullshit argument that you're making, uh, and you know, and and it's, it's not just an argument. It's it's an obvious truth. No, you're just being a contrarian. You're looking for any uh, way to uh, tear down Trump. Well, you know, yeah, it, it, okay, it was coming a Christ, Rob. Tell the truth. Why should anybody believe this guy? He doesn't tell the truth. He's a mobster. It yeah. Was on TV. I believe. I think that he has an ulterior motive that benefits Donald Trump for everything. Well, you're going to see the in the world Rob, be damned. You're going to see the IG report that's supposed to come out on Comey and uh, McCabe and and a couple of these other cronies. Uh, and, then, and what they did with Hillary in the emails, and you'll is see this, why they're trying to crush Trump. Is this um, is this the same kind of uh, the details that we were going to see in two weeks about uh, how Obama was bugging him? We'll see this, it in two this weeks. This is a big report. Weeks. Yeah, where is where, 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 where is all that stuff? Remember, he was going to reveal how Obama was spying on him. Spygate. Out in the IG report. Mm, we'll see. Uh, yeah, how do you know what's in the IG report? See what happened. How do you know what's in the IG report, Phil? I was listening to the pundits this uh, this evening on the news. Yeah, and what were they saying? <laughs> well, they were. Uh, I guess they were also talking about McCabe is suing uh, 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 Trump or the FBI uh, for his firing, uh, and they're and they're saying that this is these are things he's trying to do to counteract the fact that they're going to come down on him. For uh, for what he did, and so we'll see. This IG report is supposedly jam packed with good stuff that will uh, show that uh, tr uh, the Obama uh, people and the DNC uh, and the FBI uh, did what Trump said they did. So you say that there's nothing there. I say well, you can't say there's back. something there until there's something there, Phil. You you have a you have a good way of doing that with anything else that Trump does. Well, it, it, well, take a look at what's happened with this Mueller investigation. It's not like it hasn't turned up anything. Everybody around the guy is either going to go to prison or is going to turn state's evidence. You know, the way they do that is they get they trip the guy up uh, with a statement and then all of a sudden they indict him. Uh, I, I doubt I doubt anybody's going to go to prison. Yeah. I doubt that anybody is going to. Uh, uh, be I, I think Mueller is is up shit's creek. If you want, not Mueller. Uh, 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 um, what's his Manafort. name? Manafort. Manafort is up shit's creek. Do you know that he's wearing two ankle bracelets? They're matching. They're wearing two ankle bracelets. 
you know. Oh, you won't. don't think anybody's going to go to prison now? I mean, look what happened to Scooter Libby, among other 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 people he from got, other prior Republican administrations. Well, he got that's, pardoned. That's, well, he got a pardon, but he was, ass he did. But he went by to jail. of his ass he did, and by that I mean by Trump. If it weren't for Trump, he'd still be I, in fucking jail, rotting where he belongs. I think Scooter Libby was thrown under the bus uh, during the original deal. Mm -hmm. I think he was yeah, but maybe by Cheney. I'll I'll give you that much. Maybe by Cheney, and he should have gone to jail right the fuck with him. But <laughs> like that's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, yes, Ray. Okay, I'm about sorry, the eyebrow, I just need I'm to Cheney. say this. I just looked it up on Snopes. And, Phil, you will know this. It was a lighting issue. There was a lighting issue. There was a shadow coming across below his eyebrow, and I just saw the whole technical uh, analysis of it. His eyebrow did not fall off. Okay, I just need so to that's say a, that. So that's an excuse. So, <laughs> Bullshit. Go look at it yourself, Phil. All yeah. right. Where where did you see it? And you're the, you're the photographer. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Snopes. Where did you see it? Snopes. Okay, go on Snopes.com. All right. Good old Snopes. Yeah, good old <laughs> Snopes. In a world full of lies, they are the keepers of the truth. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I just think that uh, um, it was a big ado about nothing, and I, I knew that he was going to come out of there trying to have something to say that they did, but they didn't do anything. You know, yeah, they met with each other. I think that's very nice. But then again, uh, the United States has met with North Korea before, and I don't think a president has ever met with them because. Uh, uh, he didn't need to. Uh, they they sent the people who knew what they were doing uh, rather than a president. But uh, I think there was, I think, I'm trying to remember, was it it was either Reagan or Clinton or somebody who they made a, uh, they actually had a peace accord or, a, you know, a denuclear or whatever with, with North Korea. And uh, it was, uh, uh, and they broke it. They broke it. Yes, Jeff. Oh, turn your mic on, Jeff. Jeff, turn your mic on. No, it's not on. Um, yeah. I think that North Korea mm -hmm. has nuclear equipment. We all know that. Undoubtedly. And the, and the biggest concern, I don't think we're going to take it away from them. They're not going to give it up. No. But the biggest concern is that they're going to sell it to other countries. Yeah, no more than and Iran will. Right, and that's the biggest so-called risk of us. But I never heard Trump talk about that at all, nor did well, anybody else I think, at the show. I think what was bothering everybody today, more than anything else, was his lionizing of Kim. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and and uh, lionizing his uh, his his place in the world and how his country loves him and he should be building a condos on this lovely beach yeah. uh, which by the way he saw when he saw pictures of rockets being <laughs> launched from them and uh, and waxing poetic about he his people love him and he's talented you know he he could if he didn't bring up the civil the human rights issue which Maybe I don't know if I would or I wouldn't have because you're trying to start a dialogue and why get hostile. But you don't go out there and do a speech lionizing the guy. That's right. the and, problem. And, and that plus the fact that, what, you know, what, what, what Pat Bar brought up, mm -hmm. there was only one question about that in the press conference. And his answer was, well, we didn't have time. That was the answer to the civil rights. Was we didn't yeah. have time. Yeah. He had to take him out and show him the car. Yeah, that just didn't. That just didn't. That wasn't. He showed an him a car. Yeah, you didn't see the video. He took him out to. Oh show yeah, him. he took him out to the car and showed him the fucking car. Yeah, he was dying to show him his it's car. It's like Jesus Christ. That's like, you know, here's <laughs> like here's the beach you can have your, your minute, casino it, on. Is, oh yeah, and here's my car. Is that the official limousine that they carry take with yeah. them on Air Force yeah. One? Yeah. The beast, they call it the yeah, beast. Yeah. yeah, why didn't Jim, Jim Kim Jun un go out and show him his toilet that he brought with him, too? Yeah, the flushable one. Yes, yeah, this is uh, the Pat toilet I brought with you, <laughs> Mr. Trump. You should bring your own toilet. Patrick has his hand up. Yes, Patrick. Has anybody ever really considered that the reason that Trump was speaking the way he did about uh, Kim Jong un was because he recognized himself? in him and oh, know that the way to get 
something out of him is to treat him the way that he wants to be treated. Perfect. Perfectly said. And I don't know that that's a bad thing if, if, and it's a big if. Remember, I'm not a big Trump supporter by any stretch of the imagination, but if this could result in peace and result in positive things happening, mm-hmm. isn't that such a bad thing that he's tickling the tip of his dick in the beginning here? But, and then uh, but, if there are more meetings to follow, maybe it gets a little bit more complex and a little bit more um, uh, hard bargain. Yeah, how about which if he brings me so back to Rodman? Which brings me back to Rodman. Rodman okay. kind of opened that thing up and tickled his dick a little bit in the beginning, and said, "Here, I'm a big basketball player. You like basketball, you know? Let's let's play around a little bit." And then now he's got Mister Mister Trump over there playing with him a little bit. You know, I, I you know if it's going to come out good, I don't have a problem with it. But it's just I just don't like the. Well, the grandstanding that's going on. I can, with I can see why denuclearization is a palatable uh, thing for Kim to do. And the reason is this. What do the nuclear weapons give him? They've already given him what he wanted it to give him. Was that credibility in the world that he didn't have when he didn't have these nuclear weapons. Okay. So he could say tomorrow, I'm going to denuclearize as soon as he finds that the rest of the world still keeps him in high esteem. An American president flew across the pond to go meet with this tin horn dictator from what was a tin horn country that barely, you can't even see it from space because the lights aren't on, you know. Uh, And all of a sudden, he's a big deal. The whole world is showing his picture. The whole world remember, is... Remember, he's only 20, what, 30, barely 30 years yes. old. 36. It's 36. He's a freaking kid. 36. He took it over when he was 26. 26, yeah. 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 Uh, but, Overachiever. Uh, yeah. What I'm saying is is that that uh, he's already gotten what he needs out of, out of his nuclear capability. He can ditch that whole program if it means that it's going to make his country wealthy and that he's going to get a lot of things out of it. So really, uh, Trump is simply walking into a situation. You know, I, uh, you, you're, you'll be next because Jeff has his hand up, Phil, then you. Yes? I, I often have negotiated a lot of different uh, companies and, and countries also. And I, uh, my strategy has always been can we make it a win-win deal? In other words, does it affect me positively? Does it affect you positively? Right. I never heard any of that, really, uh, from Trump. Well, you have to remember, and, and, Trump's a, Trump was, he was not a great businessman. I mean, he liked, he liked, he liked the world to think so because that's what he was merchandising was his ability, supposedly as being a great businessman, but quite frankly, he was not a good businessman, and he's no. not being a good. And now he's making the big mistake of thinking you do this just like you do any business deal. And I'm sorry, uh, he wasn't very good at that in the first place. Yes, Phil. That's you know, true. We've been in uh, uh, protecting the South Koreans, and we've spilled blood there uh, mm-hmm. for 70 years. We've spent billions and billions of dollars. Uh, fighting this uh, supposed threat. Uh, if we didn't have to do that, uh, wouldn't that save our country uh, a lot of money and it would save a lot of lives? It, it just makes Wait, sense. When that was the last time somebody died? I have a there's friend. There's a conflict who, there that's lasted for 70 years. I understand that, but I have a friend who enlisted in the, in the Army and he went over to Korea and he loved it there. He, in fact, he met a beautiful Korean girl who I met. She's she came here to visit him. He is dying to go back there. Oh, I'm getting it. Nobody's died there in years. Who's died yeah, there? And, and secondly, well, secondly, a, Phil, 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 name a country where we had an air base or anything like that that after the war was over 
we left. Just well, the Philippines. Uh, we got thrown out of the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, what, what, what was that base that... Uh, Subic uh, Bay? That was in Manila. Subic Bay, yeah. Yeah, they, they threw us How out of How does I forget everything else, but I can, I can remember that. Yeah. Is that you, where you, you got didn't your even have to, uh, you didn't even have to pause and I knew it. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Is that where you got your tattoo? Yeah, that's where I got my tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never be well, buried in a Jewish cemetery. Yeah. Your, your Navy thing? Uh, oh, my. Yeah. No, I, I should have gotten an anchor, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, Ray. There, you know, actually, there has been no conflict in in Korea because of our presence and Korea has thrived economically and contributed South Korea economically to the world for many years um, and so I, I just think that argument holds no weight well, whatsoever. I have a close friend uh, Conrad uh, you can see him on my Facebook he, he just turned 86 today and he won a bronze star with a valor uh, with a V on it uh, in Korea yeah. uh, uh, you know, because uh, uh, he was uh, being overrun, and he uh, took over the machine gun well, nest. Well, your point is what, well, Phil? But you're talking huh? about. Wait a second. The war, I admit that that war was horrible, right. and we it don't was... talk about it a lot because we wasn't. La it didn't last very long. But we lost a lot of people, and the Koreans lost a lot of people. I'm just saying, after since the war, since the there has war. been no conflict. I'm not talking about during the war. Well, Why would I be so stupid to do that? You, uh, he just had to mention somebody and, again and, that he knows that was in the dad to have a badge of that. Let's count the fact that it happened. Of course but, it but, happened. But, I'm talking but, about oh, after. Oh, what? What? The Korean you, War you, didn't happen? But, yeah, but, you know, no, well, it did happen, happen, and it's been s happening for 70 years. No, no it hasn't. No, it hasn't. Your argument has taken happened. hostages. No, it hasn't been going on, Phil. There hasn't been a war. What about Otto Warmbier? What about Otto Warmbier? No, the, uh, no, the no, kid no. That, 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 that was a kid who was, went. That yeah. was. That was it wasn't like they snuck across the border and grabbed him, or he was charging in there with a rifle. He was there on a vacation. Yeah. Yeah. He took a poster. No, but that isn't that. No, the war has been Our, over, Phil. You can't Our use one example. In North Korea. It's a cushy gig going on there in South Korea. It's a great gig. Believe me. Yes, Mr. No, no, yeah. Patrick. Technically, the war is not over. That's the whole right. The war right. Technically, actually on. However, it has not been an active war, militarized since '53. Right. And there, a uh, peace accord was never signed. That's right. That was one of the things that I was hoping that would come out of this meeting yesterday or today, whatever. Um, but I think that if that that comes out of it. That's a good thing for both the North and the South. As far as Warm Beer and some of these other folks, um, they took their life in their own hand by wandering into North Korea anyway. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of like when the Soviet Union was the Soviet Union. Um, yeah, people could go over there on vacation, but your ass needed to be aware of what you were doing. Yeah. So that you didn't, and the same as Singapore. Does that mean, anybody remember that kid that did graffiti? And right. I'm not being yeah, Kane. I remember that. Uh, Kane. I'm, Kane, yeah. yeah. I first that on Bird with Children. <laughs> right, I mean, that's, so when you go into countries like that, uh, you got to be careful. So that had nothing to do with the war, um, Phil. It, that's just the way that North Korea had been. Right, um, but it doesn't have to be that way if we yeah, but live in peace. If you why you think that if we sign some kind of accord that the United States is going to pull out of South Korea suddenly? No, I <laughs> think that they'll wind down. I yeah, don't I, think we I, will. I think these these war games, I, I just like Trump said, was provocative. Never and, ever going to happen unless they get thrown out. Yes, uh, let me see here. Who had his hand up first? Let me go to Ray, and then let me go to Jeff. Uh, was this warm beer guy the kid who took the poster off the wall, got put yes. in jail? Okay, yes. so what happened with he was in South Korea with his friends, and some, uh, some person from North Korea who represented the government and tourism invited them to come to North Korea, and they said, oh, okay, we'll go. So they went to North Korea. He had a couple beers. He thought it'd be funny to take this advertisement thing off the wall, and then he ends up in jail. So don't don't say he wandered into North Korea. He was invited into North Korea 
he, so by a North Korean like travel consultant. What? Uh, he he was he was he was charmed into coming over. Or, yeah, he was or, by or, North Korea. Cajoled into coming over. Yeah, and then, and then he <laughs> then he stole okay. something off a wall. You know, if he did the same thing in Singapore, he'd get like two or three yeah. lashes. Right. Yeah. You know. So if you're a North person, I spent two weeks in Singapore. I loved it. The food is awesome. The people are awesome. But don't and spit on the ground. Anything. There's no shit on the sidewalk. Right. I didn't write on anything. I didn't chew gum and spit it out on the sidewalk. Yep. yep. Yes. Yes, uh, 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 Patrick. Yeah, I want to apologize to Ray for misinformation. However, the point still stands. You need to be aware of your surrounding and I where agree. you're at. I, I agree. agree. I mean, I wouldn't do that if I went to somebody's house in the United States. You know, I mean, it, it just... It, it, it's bad manners, and you also need to be aware of what country. Like I said, the USSR, when it existed, uh, people could go back and forth on vacation without problem, but you still needed to be aware of where your ass was. So well, you didn't I'll, do... I'll, I'll, no, I agree. I'll... I went to China when it was a fully, full-on communist country, and I went, and I was careful. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, this guy, how old was this kid? How was well, I mean, how stupid was he to go to North Korea in the first place? Yeah, I know. I mean, I agree. you got to follow the laws of the country you're in. And if the laws suck, either don't go or be really careful, you know. I, I'm not, I, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to make it clear that he just wasn't like, you know, willy-nilly wandering into North Korea like those people did. Where was it? The, those two kids Iran. that were hiking yeah. and they wandered into Iran or something like yeah. that. Iran. Yeah, yeah. Now that, that was a different story because well, who knows what they were up to? But they were CIA actually. Yeah. yeah so Jeff. Yeah. Turn your mic on. Turn your mic on. Marcel. Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. It's mime night. I know. I always. Keep uh, I have uh, a number of medical products that that were developed in South Korea. And because they had a great little manufacturing operation, mm -hmm. and their costs were good, and their my, quality. My was car good. was made in South Korea. And I was going to say, a lot of people know about Korean cars. Yeah, mine too. They're sold here all the time. Hyundai makes a lot of yep. stuff, including Ford. Yeah, that's what I'm driving. So yeah. you know, South Korea is is a let's say a very organized country. Mm -hmm. And except for the North Korean, which is, they have one capability, which is nukes. Other than that, they really don't have much going for them. Star you know, people are Chad bored. Starving. That there's no graffiti. Uh, that uh, I didn't see any disabled people. I didn't see any bums on the street. No beggars. Where is Seoul. this? In Seoul. Oh, Seoul. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, at six o'clock in the morning. It was bumper to bumper traffic, and everybody was working. Well, think of uh, the companies that are come from there. LG is a, is a yeah. South Korean company. I believe Samsung is. Samsung, yeah. Hyundai. Uh, Hyundai, yeah. So I mean, it's not like uh, a poor a poor little country. I think the problem is, is that North Korea, because of their position and the way they have acted over the years have not been able to be a, a successful nation that way. But they could have been, you know. And um, they may be because of what's happened in the last two days. Well, uh, I'm sure I'm sure that Donald Trump will buy the first product off the line, okay? Well, he. I guess he's going to get a, a timeshare uh, on that, uh, on that yeah. island. Yeah, and I hope he moves there and leaves us the fuck alone. Yeah. Okay. Well, now let me bring let me bring up let me bring up let me bring up a couple other things. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, uh, and I have another Trump one, but we'll we'll do that in a bit. You know, we had two suicides within a relatively short period of time. Uh, yeah. Kate Spade, uh, yeah. who was the uh, the sister-in-law of my friend David Spade. And uh, was a oh, handbag shit. maker, huh. and uh, the uh, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, and, Anthony and, and, and Anthony Bourdain, uh, mm -hmm. who uh, I I loved his show on CNN. I don't know if you've ever ever watched it. He or did whatever. one on Pittsburgh. 
Yeah, but it's just Not terrific. Like just terrific. He, he waxed you always poetic. reminded me of Anthony Bourdain. I do? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought there was a similarity in, in your look. Well, anyway, anyway. Uh, Patrick, we lost Patrick's picture, but I don't know. He may be going off to mm. stab it and grab it or something. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> the um, uh, but everybody has been saying, oh, it's so sad. It's just horrible. You know, and they've just been waxing poetic about this. And the first thing that I thought was, what selfish fucks were they? One had a kid who was 11 years old, and I think the other one had a kid who was 13. How, and then Kate a Spade, in her suicide letter, said to the kid, uh, it's not your fault, ask daddy. You know, I mean, what kind of selfish shit wow. is this? You, you're going to leave behind a, a teenage children, you know? I, I just, I, I find that absolutely the most selfish of things to do. Were these uh, people on some sort of psychotropic drug? No. Uh, are you sure? Uh, because uh, Bourdain had a lot of drug problems. Uh, yes, he played when he had Bourdain. a drug problem when he was a kid. When he was younger. What is that? That's... <laughs> Somebody's phone. So Wait a minute. We just Patrick lost. Trying to come we, back. we just lost Patrick again. Bourdain. Bourdain yeah. still might be had having connection issues. Problem. Yeah. What? What did you he, say, Ray? Bourdain still had a drug problem. He was he was on heroin and uh, he he was a heroin addict through his twenties, mm -hmm. and then um, he still had a, a a really bad drinking problem, and for a heroin addict that's multiplied by a hundred, and yeah. he and he smoked a ton of weed, and um. I was listening to Joe Rogan, who was a friend of his, and they went hunting um, a few months ago, went pheasant hunting, and um, Anthony Bourdain, you know, killed, you know, cooked the pheasant, it was awesome, and then he got into the whiskey, and Joe said he just was down in the whiskey, and, uh, and smoking the weed, and Joe couldn't do anymore, and Anthony just kept going, and um, it, it's the kiss of death, if you are, if you're a heroin addict, if you're an addict, on a hard drug like that, mm -hmm. and and in your life, if you keep drinking a lot and stuff, you, you're really playing with fire, because you the, the the shit it does to your brain is really bad. By the way, Rob, we've lost your camera. Are you still there? I've lost everything. I can't I can't uh, even see the app anymore. I hear you guys, oh. but I don't even see the app. It's gone from my screen. It's the wackiest thing. So I just decided, how the hell with it. We see your picture and we hear you. Yeah. We see. Yeah, it's 11:40. I'm like, I'm not gonna bother. Just, <laughs> yeah, just exactly. you have another monitor because sometimes I, I have two monitors there. and they're both up. And I just oh. checked, but all of a sudden it all went away, and all I see are their desktops now on the. It monitor. just cr it crashed. Yeah, and it's not in my task. It's not in the you know the, on the task bar there. So I, well, <laughs> I, I was smart enough not to do the update that they said was in my uh, was ready to be uh, ready to be done. I didn't get conned by that one. Well, this well, time. But wait a minute, uh, he has. A, you're using a PC, right, Rob? Yeah, PC. Yeah, and you're using a Mac, Phil. Yes. Yeah. Well, when you do Control Alt Delete, it's not showing uh, Skype in As the task bar. I, I should check Task Manager if I do. Yeah, control. that's what I meant. Yeah, Control Alt Delete. Yeah, on Task Manager. Yeah. Oh, I do Control Alt Delete. But anyway, Alex, that, I know it seems selfish. That uh, but I mean, it just seems it seemed I, I couldn't. But, I felt great sympathy for the children because you know the kids are going to blame themselves. You know, yeah, they're going to have psychological. Uh, and they're going to have psychological for issues for years to come. And why you would leave your why in your moment of desperation you don't say, well, I can't kill myself because I've got this kid. You I know. thought Kate Spade had money problems. They said uh, no, there was no, something. That no, no, no. Uh, but she, she and her husband were living separately. Yeah. Uh, but they were working on their marriage, so it wasn't like all of a sudden they were out dating other people and they had given up on each other and they had enmity towards yeah. each other. They were working on it. But yes, Patrick. Um, my understanding is. Hers seemed more planned out versus Anthony Bourdain, which was almost like a snap decision. Um, so, you know, um, I can't 
speak to depression personally. I know people who deal with it and deal with other psychological issues. And I, I agree it seems selfish when it involves children because you're putting a lot on their plate that they shouldn't have to deal with. But I don't think people who commit suicide who are in that state are thinking as clearly as what you and I might, Alec, because we're not dealing with all of these demons that seem to cloud judgment. And, you know, like when I got paralyzed, I was told I was supposed to be depressed mm. by a psychologist. Yeah. <laughs> and they insisted I was depressed and that I needed to be, and I said, well, I'm not, and I had all these other goals, and, you know, I, I guess we're all made differently, and I can't sit in judgment on either one of those two on whether or not it was selfish or not. All I can say is, like you said, I feel badly for the children because they're going to carry that for the rest of their life, um, whether, you know, it was my fault. What you know, I didn't get a good grade in school or whatever. So, and for Kate Spade to leave that message, um, that yeah, was, it was like she was almost she was saying, so "I blame your dad for this." So go ask him why. Yeah. What a selfish thing. And it's, uh, I think suicide's a selfish act. Well, I think it's it, it, more than that. Sometimes it's it's a, an act of getting even. Uh, a lot of times people do it to get even with people. That's pretty selfish. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. I love getting right. even. I love being vindictive, as you've to as you've uh, listened to in the first 25 minutes of this program. I can be a very vindictive motherfucker, but the only... The only problem with uh, the only problem with uh, trying to be vindictive via the use of suicide is that you can only do it once. <laughs> oh, my, uh, uh, Rob was trying to say. Or as I like to stab uh, you oh, in the oh, back oh, oh, and second. in the front hey, with a knife okay. repeatedly. Okay, uh, 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 Brian. Uh, uh, Rob sure. was trying to say something. All I all I said it's the it's the old I'll show them, you know, mentality. I'll show them they wronged me or they'll see when I'm gone. I think it, a lot of it is that when you, you know, that's one of the ways you think when you're thinking about doing something the like one that. Thing, the one thing that got me was how they committed suicide. Uh, they, they hung themselves by doorknobs. Like yeah, how, do you, how, does, how do you do that? I mean, I'm that's taller, I'm taller than any doorknob. You sit on the floor. Yeah. You just choke and, yourself. Yeah. No. Nah. Yes. Yeah. That's yep. what they do. Yeah. Well, they will have to themselves do, until they pass out. I'll yeah. have to do they that on the show. I'll have to do that on the show tonight. Is some night here? Because how did it, David Carradine do it? Uh, he he did it by uh, some sort of. Yeah, but he was jerking off. He was oh. just trying to get that. He was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was just trying to get a lot of erotic asphyxiation. Already. Yeah, he wasn't trying to kill himself. Yeah. He slipped or something. Yeah, but I think Bourdain <laughs> actually did it with the hotel bathrobe. Uh, sash, uh, you know, belt or whatever you call those things, which you know, uh, usually you steal those, don't you? You don't hang yourself with them. <laughs> they sent you, Bill. <laughs> well, maybe I the house know. people stole it after they uh, investigated. Yeah, yeah, I think the Anthony Bourdain one is particularly uh, shocking. You know, just because he was such a big personality, a lot of people related to him. I know I did. We well, no, but, 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 but to, I even went to Costa. I went to Costa Rica last year, and I went to this restaurant that our driver brought us to, and they thought I was Anthony Bourdain coming in to review the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, the so thing hilarious. is, I got to tell Did you, they count the meal? I, I got to tell you, yeah, Kate's, no, don't they, don't, they don't underestimate him, but, don't underestimate uh, Kate Spade. When she died, my wife was grieving because you know women know those handbags. Yeah, you know. And she got out of the handbag business a few years back, sold the company, had a lot of money from it, and uh, just recently started a new company with her husband. But all and I'm saying is... has got her daughter's name. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's her daughter's name yeah. for Greek or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And just keep in mind with, with Anthony, we don't, know a lot of, uh, we don't know a lot of stuff. I mean, we know he was a heroin addict. I know that he had a drinking problem still. And I know also that... Um, if you combine all those things and you have depression, it can turn into psychosis quite quickly. 
And then you're not going to be thinking straight at all. Yeah. And you could do anything and not even know what the hell you're doing. Well, I'd kill myself, uh, only I'm a coward. So, you know. Uh, well, the Romans used to think it was a heroic act. Oh, oh yeah. It was, uh, yeah. So, so uh, uh, what was the, not the kamikazes, were the... The samurai or something would uh, yeah. would choose suicide over uh, uh, over other forms shame. of shame. Shame, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dishonor. Has anybody heard the um, the fud going out there about Bourdain's death? The 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 the, the deep uh, what do you call it? Not rumor, but uh, they're saying that he was about to uncover uh, a, a pedophile ring, and that he was killed by the Clintons. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Vince Foster, it's Vince Foster, state you're uh, talking The about. ghost of Vince Foster came back and murdered. Yeah, no. Hey, <laughs> bunch of religious fan fanatics. Wow. Just to change the subject, the people that are really uh, hard up, they're offering twelve months for sixty dollars at Sirius Satellite. Twelve months. Uh, so that's five bucks a month for tw for twelve months. Oh, I gotta just unsubscribe so I can get that. Yeah. Wait a minute, that's I've not. I've got a lifetime for my vehicle, so fuck it. Wait a minute, five, twelve. It used to be you get four months. Yeah, now, you're right. Well, it's well, twelve. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good. Uh, deal. But you know what you don't get? You don't get the internet service. Uh, okay. I don't need it. Uh, you don't I need Sirius satellite. Phone. Uh, they kept calling Shecky over and over again. Each time, the price kept going down and down and down. You know, so that's how it works. Hey, listen, I, I'd subscribe if I were you. I really would. All of you, please. I think that's a pretty good because deal. my stock with them has been doing pretty goddamn well. So yeah. you know, uh, they vested me like uh, thirty-four hundred, like five thousand shares originally. I got to sell a certain amount off every year, and. Mm. Uh, Every year I sell off less than I make from it, so like it's up to it's up to a good like, good amount now, you know. So hey, Alex, did did you see uh, Lampanelli cussing out the whole crowd at the San Jose yeah. Civic Auditorium, which the other he, night? Yes, Lampanelli. she just she just it wasn't just cussing out; it's just she went ballistic. Oh yeah, she went insane. Yeah, why? Did why? you see that? Because one guy was uh, heckling her, and then she just went off on everybody. Everybody, like, the whole everybody fucking the audience. audience. <laughs> Learn how to she alienate. Was not kidding. Now, not, that, not her act. And that she, that brings us to the she next. Channeling Robert De Niro. Well, this is what I was going to bring up next. Yeah. Was uh, Robert De Niro at the uh, at the uh, uh, Tonys? Tonys. Um, which I would play for you, but I've tested it and I can't get it to play anywhere because they they keep censoring it. And I went and tried to find the most obscure version of it, and they still uh, who's would, censoring the Australian one uh, where he doesn't. No, if I I tried the Australian one and that one, they said, well, you know, where you can play it, it'll go out, but uh, you know, certain uh, certain players won't be able to watch it. And I found Rick. out that, for instance, on my uh, on my TV set when I went to YouTube, it wouldn't play it. Okay, so, so actor, can you can you do it live? Yeah. <laughs> yeah can you do your yeah. best, Robert yeah, De Niro? I can do it. Yeah. What were the, let me get the right the exact. It was like uh, no. it's no longer. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to see the words. What were they? Uh, uh, it's no longer down with Trump. It's fuck Trump. Yeah, and he also started out first time. He said that twice. First yeah, time he just came out and said, uh, I, "I just want to say I this, to fuck Trump," yeah. and, and the audience went crazy. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was so. Which, which proves to me the gays don't like uh, don't like Trump. I mean, this was just right after those kids from Florida sang the song from Rent. Yeah, you know, it was like it was like two minutes later. That was just terrible. They actually did a very good job of it. They did, and then they had De Niro coming out acting like that. That was awful. That was awful. He's not even a stage actor. What the hell is he there for? Uh, they knew he was going to uh, do that. I believe uh, a Bronx Tale he produced on Broadway, or he uh, maybe I even... love that. Sh I love that. That's right. You're right. He did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. yeah. So right. he, he does. Okay. I, I yeah. loved that movie. Uh, yeah, you, but you, say, but you, you didn't recently. like him doing it, saying, fuck Trump. No, I thought it was. I, I I just didn't think it fit the night, and I, and I mean it was such a feel good 
night and there was a lot of love and stuff and then those kids sang and then he comes out with the fuck Trump, fuck Trump. It's like, I don't know. I, I just didn't think it was the right place. I just thought it was a big, big downer. I thought it spoiled well, Some people felt evening. it was a bad thing to happen because they feel that it might alienate some people. Yeah, who, you know, it's who, just going to give the, the 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 people who do support Trump more more wep, more weaponry now to to. Uh, I mean, I, 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 just, I, I didn't I, have, I didn't really idea. have any problem with it, but I think there are political ramifications. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, I didn't personally feel insulted. Yeah. I just felt like it was just a bad decision. Yeah, that's all, Patrick. Yeah. yeah see, I don't even hear that stuff. I mean, not in fan of Trump, but all my life, all I've heard was Hollywood and musician putting down any of my political beliefs, and I can't live my life trying to weed them out, because if I did, I'd have nothing to watch and nothing to listen to. Right. So if, if Robert De Niro doesn't like Trump and says that, and I agree with Ray, I don't, I don't think that it was the right place to do it because of the, you know, it, it, right after, you know, the kids and all of that. But if he wants to say it, that's fine. I still like all his movies. I'm not going to boycott De Niro because he has an opinion that I disagree with. Phil will. You know, it just <laughs> goes to prove that if he doesn't have somebody writing the words that come out of his mouth, he just spews shit. All right, let me tell you a story about Robert De Niro. Uh, I had heard that Robert De Niro was one of the stupidest people on the face of the earth. Proof. That, 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 uh, that from a, a brain standpoint, it's, he's lucky he can breathe. He has such low intellect, okay? And so one night I'm at dinner with somebody who is, is best friends with Robert De Niro. And I said at dinner to my wife uh, in front of them, I said, I hear De Niro is just one of the stupidest people on the planet. He was standing behind you, and and no, wait a minute, and his <laughs> and she and my wife said, "Hey, look, so and so's the best, his best friend. You shouldn't say that." And he looked back at me and went, "He is one of the stupidest people on planet Earth." Have you heard the yeah. same thing, right, Ray? Oh yeah, the other who's the actor that was on Doogie Howser? He's a musical guy now. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Jason Patrick. Uh, pa Jason pa pa Patrick. Patrick. Somebody. Patrick. Yeah. Anyway, he said the same thing. He didn't. He was nice so about Patrick it. Patrick Harris. He, yeah. yeah, Pat. Yeah, right. He went to an audition for his first film, and they said you're going to be reading with Bob. And he thought it was going to be like Bob, the stage manager, right? He gets in there. It's D Bob De Niro, and he's trying to aud audition with De Niro, and De Niro can't even read the fucking script. He kept he kept like screwing it up. You know that, and, 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 and he well, thought you, he wasn't going to get the part because De Niro. Right. He was like, by the end of it, he was so pissed off at De Niro. He ended up getting the role. It was like, for he walked in in awe, and he walked out totally angry. Like, <laughs> De Niro couldn't it. read the Rob, damn thing. Rob, if you've been watching SNL the last few weeks, he's been playing Muller, right? Yeah. He cannot read those lines. I know. He couldn't even say live from New York at Saturday night. He fucked that up. If you look at it, <laughs> Yeah, it could very well be. He's just a you know a dummy. Yeah, uh, or he's dyslexic but, or something. What I you said know. was if he, he didn't have writers writing the stuff that comes That's out. That's probably of him. what it is. Well, here, 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 a lot of people say, well, he's how can he be dumb? He's such a good actor, and I and I, I try to tell people this. Too. Wait a minute, Ray, and you're an actor. Will you yeah. you probably agree with me on this? You can be dumb and be a great actor. Yes. The, uh, actors are, are siphons for a personality that they're portraying. Yes, most and that actors does not are pretty, take that pretty does intelligent. Not, that, yeah, but it doesn't take intelligence. In fact, no. if you're too intelligent, you're not as good an actor. That that's actually true. The super egghead types are usually the writers. Yeah. Or uh, maybe the directors. Uh, but yeah, no, you don't have to be super smart to be a great actor. Right. Right. So, um, so, you know, but uh, especially for film, especially for film, because they can do as many takes as they want and they can tell you to do it. No, I want you to do it this way. I want Brando, you to do that. Brando used to have the words on cards around the room where they were doing the picture. Uh, yeah, when and, got and that's older, why yeah. you would see Brando kind of looking at the ceiling and go, God, because it was up there. He was reading <laughs> yeah. it. 
you know. But I think uh, they had to do that for Streetcar Named Desire because they were they almost fired him a week before the show opened on Broadway. He didn't know the lines. Really? Yes. You know? Quickly, Patrick. Uh, the theme is playing. What? It's amazing that Carol got through Once Upon a Time in America. And that was a long fucking film, and he had a lot of fucking lines. And- yeah. Yeah. Well, he could add an earpiece too. Yeah. Sometimes they use earpiece. Hey, listen. And earpiece. Thank you all. It's been a a nice evening of of discussion about the world that's falling apart in front of our very eyes. Uh, Jeff Stein, <laughs> thank you so much for being here, as well as Scott Boddicker. Hello, Scott. And uh, Kevin, thank you. Thank you to Brian Ludwig, who's been sitting alone in a car. Uh, looks like he. I'm glad that they don't think you're some kind of pervert waiting to try and pick up kids. Uh, Phil, <laughs> Phil, thank you. Patrick, Fuck thank them in you. The ass, they do. Ray, <laughs> Adi, thank you. And Rob, I hope you get your your Skype back. And uh, all of you, please give a big wave goodbye so they can uh, they can see your lovely faces. Bye bye. And uh, that's our um, that's our uh, our panel for tonight. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me get me on here. There we go. And let me get also get rid of them at the same time uh, by closing down Skype so the next people can use it. That's Jack and Amy with the intersection. Followed very closely thereafter at one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time by Connections. And then uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, yeah, tomorrow night we'll be back at uh, 8.30 with uh, the arena with the franchise MC followed by Damian Chaplin. He's at 9.30 with the exchange, and then I'll be back here tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, same time. Same station in life in the meantime. If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.